Sound design. It's an extremely important in adding emotion to your film. So in this video, I'll show you 10 different tips about sound design. Let's see a quick preview of this project. Here I've used 50 different types of sound effects for this project. And all these sound effects I've used from my ultimate sound effects pack. You can check out this pack under the description link. In this project, as you can see here I'm using 8 layers for this sound design, and layering is very important to feel the depth of your video. So our first step is to organize the sound effects into categories, I have separated the three categories of sound effects. Hit and risers, transition and whoosh, ambient and texture. Second one is the Rate Stretch tool. For this clip, I'm using two sound effects. The first one is the racing car sound. Second one is the swoosh sound. But as you can see the swoosh sound is too fast. So select the Rate Stretch tool. Or you can click on the R button to select this tool. Then stretch swoosh sound just like that. And now it is perfect, let's check out the before and after. The third one is the studio reverb effect. For the first clip, I'm using two sound effects, typing and glitch, in the transition I've used the camera shutter sound. And I'll add the reverb effect to the camera shutter sound. So let's mute the typing and glitch sound. Then move to the effects tab. And search for the studio reverb. Now I just apply this effect to the camera shutter sound. Then move over to the effect controls tab. Under the studio reverb effect, click on edit. Now here you'll get different types of reverb presets. But I always like to use the great hall reverb. And that's it. Now let's check out the before and after. Next one is the sound match cut. As you can see here I use two different clips. But the movement is almost similar. And we are going to make it more perfect, by using a water drop sound effect. Now we can use the default constant power fade effect. Also I've used the studio reverb effect. Next one is the low pass effect. And here I'm using two sound effects, water splash, and underwater. Now I'll create the muffle audio effect for this water splash. So move to the effects tab, and search for the low pass. Apply this effect to this layer. Move over to the effect controls tab, under the low pass effect. Maximize the cutoff value, and make a keyframe here. Then find the frame where they are completely underwater. And set the cutoff value 1000. And that's it. Let's see the before and after. Next one is the custom keyframe. You can create many different type of sounds by using the custom keyframe. For this clip, I'm using two sounds, Rhythmic Wind and the Jungle Environment. As you can see that, my footage is a bit speeding up for this part. And here I want to make a whoosh sound. So select the pen tool. Then I just make a keyframe on the wind sound. Then make another keyframe where the speed is slowing down. Now make another one between these two keyframes. Then drag it up just like that. And that's it. Let's see the before and after. Next one is the pitch shifter. Here I'm using three different clips. Selling fab. Helicopter. 
and the drone shot. But I'm using a single sound for these three clips. And it's helicopter passing sound. Now I will use the pitch shifter to match the sound for every clip. So move to the effects tab and search for the pitch shifter. Now apply this effect to the sound layer. Then cut the sound for each clip. Now I select under the selling fan sound. Under the pitch shifter, click on edit and just decrease the semitone negative 10. Now let's see the preview. It's not perfect, but it's better than before. For the helicopter shot, I think this sound is perfect. For the drone shot, select this sound layer. Under the pitch shifter, again click on edit. But this time increase the semitone. And let's see the preview. And it's better than before. Also, you can use the default constant power for the fade out. And the next effect is audio gain. For the ceiling fan sound, I'll adjust the audio gain to minus 10 decibels. So right click on the audio layer, select audio gain, and adjust gain by negative 10 decibels. Also, you can use the low pass effect for the selling fan sound. For the drone shot, I'll adjust the audio gain negative 5 decibels. Now let's see the before and after. And the next effect is the parametric equalizer. If you are using voiceover, you can use this effect to add more bass and clarity. Let's see a quick preview of this voiceover. Can I take offense at armchair warriors who don't know what a shrapnel wound feels like? Now move to the effects tab and search for the parametric equalizer. Apply this effect to the voiceover. Then under the parametric equalizer, click on edit. And here select the loudness maximizer preset. Now if we increase the L, this will increase the bass. And if we increase the H, this will increase the clarity. Now let's see the preview. And I take offense at armchair warriors who don't know what a shrapnel wound feels like. Or what death smells like after three days in the sun. Or the look in a man's eyes when he realizes he's minus a leg and his blood is seeping out. And this is the last one, how to add the riser and hit sound effects. And it was our previous clip, here I was added the studio reverb effect. So first I'll add a riser sound effect, under the typing clip. and make sure the riser ended in the middle of the cut. Then add the default fade in effect. Now I will add a sub drop hit sound effect. And this sound should start when the text part appears. Then cut and delete the unwanted par. And apply the fade out effect. Now let's see the preview. As we can see that the riser and hit sound is too high, so we need to adjust the audio gain. Also, we can add the studio reverb in this sub drop. And I will add the great hall reverb. So that's all for today, if you enjoy this tutorial, please give me a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me on Instagram, I will see you in the next one, have a nice day.